Venezuela is in a moment of high political tension. And while all the focus is on what's going on in Caracas and the battle between Nicolas Maduro and Juan Guaido, what happens in the deep south of Venezuela is absolutely crucial. For it's there that the military, which is very close to Maduro, gets its gold, which helps the government to survive in these very difficult moments. And it's there that there are a lot of armed groups present. So if the transition or is unsuccessful, if there is a disintegration of the regime or any form of chaos, it's likely that we'll see the worst sort of violence in the south. South of the Orinoco River in Venezuela, it's not the state who is in control. In Bolivar state, you have the presence of organized crime syndicates called sindicatos or pranes, who control the mines since about 10 years. Closer to the Colombian border, you have presence of FARC dissident groups and Ilan guerrillas, who historically move across the border between Colombia and Venezuela. But over the last two years, the Ilan guerrillas have overtook a large amount of mines in Bolivar state basically displacing the syndicatos closer to the border with Guyana. Communities in southern Venezuela have been plagued by mining conflicts, which basically means the extreme force of violence by crime syndicates and Colombian guerrilla groups, but also an enormous amount of environmental devastation as a consequence of these illegal wildcat mining projects. Especially indigenous communities have been forced to participate in these mining projects by force and sometimes even have been enslaved. It's of paramount importance to speak about mining conflicts in southern Venezuela, especially because of these minerals have provided the Chavistas with a lifeline. And it's especially difficult to get information out of the most southern departments of Venezuela. This has to do with the absence of journalists, NGOs and academics, and it's really difficult to penetrate into these mining areas because of the guerrilla control and the many roadblocks by the National Venezuelan Guard. We put three main recommendations down on the table. One is the importance of humanitarian attention to this very neglected area of Venezuela where living conditions are really difficult for the locals. Secondly, that great effort should be made to ensure that there is no escalation of military tensions on the border, given the number of armed groups there are in the area. And thirdly, look towards introducing internationally due diligence measures to ensure that gold exports from Venezuela don't lead to massive abuses of human rights.